Speaking of the Islanders, their best player, John Tavares, Mississauga, Ontario. You know who else is from Mississauga? Our guest right now. That would be uh, Santino Morella, former WWE star, one of my favorites of all time. Uh, Santino, thank you for calling in to Over the Top Sports Radio. How are you doing today? Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, John Tavares. So his uncle, who is also called John Tavares, and he played, he's the all-time greatest lacrosse player. He's like the Wayne Gretzky of lacrosse. He grew up across the street from me. And um, so I'm very familiar with the Tavares family in, in Mississauga. So, so Santino or Anthony, uh, whatever, what can I do for you to get you as an Islander fan to talk to John's uncle or John and make sure that he stays with the Islanders? He's a pending free agent. I know you might be a Maple Leafs fan and they have dreams of him up there, but help me out, man. Get this guy to stay on Long Island. Hell no. He should come to Toronto where he belongs and help Austin Matthews win a Dan Stanley Cup for the first time in a long time. Anyway, it would be over Love it, 40 man. years, yeah. 50 years. I'm, I'm doing a show with two Ranger fans, so uh, you made them very happy. And uh, as a guy that had each one of your teen, uh, T-shirts, Santino, you're, uh, you're killing me. But anyway, how have you been? Uh, what's new in your life uh, away from the ring a couple of years? How are you doing over there? Oh, awesome, man. Everything's awesome. fantastic. I can't complain today. I'm at a judo tournament. With, uh, I got, let's see, uh, about six competitors today at a tournament up in Brampton, Ontario. And uh, I'm the coach, so uh, we're just waiting for our, our kids' divisions to be called out. Then I'm going to have to run to the mat and be a coach. But uh, that's it, man. I do all, uh, all the things I love doing. I coach pro wrestling, I coach judo, and I do a, uh, a weekly TV show on Sportsnet 360 in Canada. I'm doing something with Fight Network and Impact Wrestling with regards to a podcast that starts next week, May 2nd, called Behind the Lights. And, uh, yeah, man, just trying to enjoy myself a little bit on the weekends. Going on a big canoe trip next week and outdoors um, up in Algonquin Park. It's a massive, massive park that that's just littered with beautiful canyons and lakes and all that kind of stuff. So it's still going to be cold, but we're going to tough it out. And, and that sounds awesome, Santino. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's talk a little wrestling here. Uh, first of all, where did the name Santino Morella even come from? Uh, you know, you already had the uh, the very Italian name there with Anthony. And where did Santino Morella come from? Yeah, so I was uh, they call, I was a Russian character, and they were looking for who, uh, if anybody in the developmental roster was actually Italian. Vince had this idea of an Italian guy to debut. So uh, they called me up, and they said, hey, can you speak Italian? And, you know, I exaggerated a bit, but I said, yeah. And they, they they flew me to Italy, and I literally debuted the next day. So the name was, they came up with the name, the the writers came up with the name. It was Sonny from The Godfather and Morella from Gorilla Monsoon and Joey Morella. Uh, so it was a tribute to him as well. And so I didn't come up with the name, they did, but it, I knew immediately that it was, a, you know, an honor to be to be called Morella. You won the Intercontinental title in your debut in your first match against Umaga. Uh, tell us how that was set up. What did Vince say to you? Were you nervous going in there? Obviously, you played, like, the whole fan uh, thing where you're supposed to be just a random fan from the crowd. Uh, how did that all work out? How did that all come about? Yeah, so I show up on, on, on TV day, and I find out that this is happening. So, of course, I'm nervous as hell. And um sit down with Vince, and he just was, you know, Calmly talked to me. He, 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 you know, he heard about me at OVW. And he heard I was doing really well, and, and um, we just, you know, he, he got to know me a little bit. You got to get to know and get a feeling of the guys you're going to be working with. So uh, that was it. We went out there and, 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 you know, planted me in the audience, and the segment went down pretty good. And it, it was almost like, um, I mean, you you always want to earn it, right? So being given the title on my debut, it, it was like being given on credit. I had to pay it off over the years of just busting my ass on the road. So it was uh, definitely an interesting way. People still talk about it. In fact, that particular segment, a lot of people happen to be watching, and I get it all the time. People are like, yo, I saw your debut, and I was there, or, you know, I, I'm trying to TV. Uh, and, and when I was in Italy, people that were there at the time were like, they still tell me like, yeah, I was in Milan that night and it was pretty incredible for the people in the audience. 
And then on uh, WrestleMania this year, it seemed like this little nine-year-old, ten-year-old Nicholas stole your uh, thing, coming out of the crowd and winning a championship. Did you see WrestleMania? And uh, you know, you you keep up with today's uh, today's wrestling. And if so, last night it seems like one of your records was beaten by Mike Kanellis. Yeah. So apparently he didn't break it, but he came close. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, and that kid Nicholas, I'll, I'll beat that kid any moment if, if I get my hands on him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, it was cool. I didn't quite understand the storyline. Like, uh, you know, he could, he can't uh, he can't defend it. Or uh, I guess what they're trying to show is Braun can beat any two men by basically by himself. So, but that kid had a, mo- a moment he'll obviously never forget. God, that, that's just, imagine being that kid. It's just surreal. Uh, it seems like Seamus almost broke the record last time, and Mike's trying to. I don't know why I can't just leave the goddamn record alone, but uh, no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone's being trying to do it. Quite... Yeah, yeah. You know what? When I broke the record, I knew it was that it had to be absolutely flawless in, in the in just and just pulling it off. You know, there wasn't, you there wasn't a second wasted. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, you've had. Some- some interesting times with WWE, uh, you know, with Snoop Dogg and Austin with the beer and the, as we just talked about the rumble, Miss WrestleMania, what was your favorite, uh, you know, out of the ring moment that you participated in? Man, you know what? For years now, I've been trying to come up with a favorite and I really actually can't. Um, everything had it. Everything was cool. You know, being, being a, um, a focal point at WrestleMania, what, even even at Santino was great. Being a captain of Team Teddy was awesome. Fighting the core, uh, the core, you know, I, that was a, that was a match for me to be able to give out a Cobra. And um, God, they're all good, man. I really, I don't have a favorite match. I don't have a favorite segment. This was really hard because they were all fun. Well, you brought up the Cobra. Where did that come about? Um, when I was in Japan before WWE. A friend of ours, he just showed me this thing where he transforms his arm into this silly little puppet. And that was it, you know. We just left it at that. And years later, I had a match. And I'm like, I'm going to try something funny in my match. And I did it at a live event. So people hadn't seen it on TV at all. And they immediately responded, you know, with laughter and stuff. So we knew we had something there. So we kept it. And it kind of just grew and took on a life of its own. And then we then we came up with uh, the actual cover to like the sleeve to put on and do it and make a whole presentation out of it. And yeah, it's, it's actually shocking on how much it caught on and people would love the Cobra. It's crazy. Now your career shifted into more of a, like a, a gimmick, funny, uh, you know, actor. And, um, I love the trombone personally. It's very, very hilarious. <laughs> were you, were you a little upset when your character was going to be a little less serious, even though I personally find it to be your best work? Yeah, of course, I trained to be like, uh, you know, a Dean Malenko or a Benoit or, you know, uh, Eddie Guerrero, that kind of, I wanted to be a tough, and right up until the moment I debuted, that that's how I was, um, but the key is staying there as long as possible, so if this particular role is going to keep me there longer, then I'm glad to do it, because 10 years is a pretty long time. Was there a moment, and I guess for me as a fan of you, like I said, man, I was a, I was a huge Santino Morella fan, but, you know, you had the, your, first, uh, your first match and you win the Intercontinental Championship, and that was kind of, you know, that was one thing and that's your debut, but the time that I really thought maybe the crowd was most involved in you, I think it was the Elimination Chamber, where you, I think it was a Daniel Bryan that beat you, but the fan, there were a lot of near falls where people were like, wow, Santino's going to actually win this, was that a moment for you that made you feel like kind of like, hey, I'm here, I'm my wrestling work is respected, like it, it's all worth it at this point, or was it another time? Yeah, around that time and around the when I had the U.S. championship, that seems to be, in retrospect, the peak with regards to the fans liking the character. The Elimination Chamber was obviously a special moment because uh, nobody ever kicked out of the Cobra with the sleeve on it. Um, one. One person kicked out of it before was Sheamus, and um, before the before the sleeve came along, 
And Daniel Bryan was the only person at that moment to kick out of the Cobra. So we conditioned the audience to really believe that the Cobra was the end. So they were totally, you know, caught off guard when they kicked out. They thought I was going to win. And when I watch it back, it, they were pretty loud that night. It was pretty cool. Uh, Santino, you worked with Maria Canales, Beth Phoenix, uh, Vladimir Kozlov. Which, uh, you know, angle there, which stable for you was uh, the most fun? Um, well, they're different, right? Beth's a you know, beautiful woman and, 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 and a hard worker and she just really knows the business very intimately. And Kozlov is just like a big, awesome guy. And he, he, he wasn't in the business as well as long as Beth was. But, you know, different types of friendships, right? Like, you know, her and I had a respect for each other, and him and I were like, you know, best buddies. And um, those were funny. Both those things that you're talking about were both some of my favorite um, periods of time in my career. Who would you say after a big show would be your favorite person to go out and party with? To party with? Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of guys that know how to party. <laughs> Uh, when, when, I first, when I first got there, me and Randy used to go get in some trouble, but, um, you know, Del Rio is always a good guy to party with, and everyone's pretty good, to be honest. Cena, we, Cena and I had a few, a few beers together over the years as well. Um, so... You know, 44 years old now, away from the ring, everybody has a comeback at some point, whether it's in a battle royal, Royal Rumble, uh, a, a anniversary show or something. Uh, any chance we see Santino on TV anytime soon? I don't know. I think I might be doing something on the Edging Christian show this upcoming season. And my wow. daughter is training right now. So my daughter's 22 years old, and she's training in London, Ontario with Tyson Kidd. So she'll probably go down to NXT at some point. And, you know, I That's imagine awesome. to help her transition to the main roster in the future, they might call me up for some storyline. But uh, otherwise, I'm, I, I don't want to go on the road anymore. I'm really, I just I like staying put for once. Uh, yeah, that's awesome to hear. We look forward to, you know, following your daughter's career and, and checking out the Edge and Christian show. Real quick, before we let you go, uh, we know, obviously, up in Canada, you got to be a huge hockey fan. Maple Leafs just got eliminated, but give us your prediction. Who will win the Stanley Cup? I don't know. I would like to see Vegas go all the way, just for the Cinderella story, you know. Uh, but, of course, Pittsburgh's always strong. Um, and, of course, Winnipeg Jets are – the last Canadian team, so I wouldn't mind seeing them, you know, go farther, but uh, shit, I don't know. Let's say, I'll say Vegas. Wow, that would be a lot of fun. Trust me, that city's uh, one of the best cities to watch hockey, and I've been to a game there this year, so uh, if you haven't seen oh, a yeah? game there, uh, when your Leafs are there, it might be one of the best atmospheres I've ever been involved in uh, for any sporting wow. event. And uh, I have to get up to Toronto, too. I've been trying to go there, but listen, San you know, Thank you so much for a few minutes. Uh, it was great c- catching up with you. Like I said, I know you guys, you know, your merchandise is big. I had all your shirts. So uh, go talk to John Tavares, okay? And uh, just do me a solid, and uh, and I really appreciate it. You guys got Austin Matthews. You don't need John Tavares. No, we need John Tavares. And Luke Tavares. <laughs> well, uh, well, thank you anyway for uh, joining us, and uh, best of luck to you, and uh, we'll keep an eye out on your daughter's career as well, and best of luck to her. Oh, thanks. Okay, guys, we'll, we'll catch up again sometime. Thank you so much. That's Santino Morello, former WWE superstar, um, hockey fan, and a great uh, addition to the show. So thank you so much for uh, him joining us. And, uh, you know, a couple of good things out there. But, uh, yeah, I want to kick Nicholas back. <laughs> yeah, uh, him versus Nicholas at the next WrestleMania would uh, definitely be a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, definitely a good spot. Uh, did not expect the, uh, the John Tavares thing to uh, go against me the way it did. But uh, either way, uh, good spot, good career, and funny to hear him in his regular voice as opposed to his character's voice, which not many of us have heard before. Yeah, uh, awesome. Uh, I thought it was actually pretty funny. So, uh, you know, the, the same on-screen uh, humor that you see, you know, off here, uh, very funny guy. 
And uh, it actually goes to show you the travel schedules with these guys, how tough the travel is, that he's actually content. He did his 10 years. He's kind of over the traveling right now. But um, good luck to his daughter, and uh, we wish her the best. And I hope um, – I'm sure we'll see Santino down the road for another Royal Rumble. Uh, he's got to be a, a surprise. That's what I said. Like a one-time sure. appearance isn't going to kill yeah. your travel, especially if his daughter's up in NXT. I and... can totally see Vince at the out of pocket just to have him come into the ring for one second. And again. now we know why he didn't come last night because you you don't want to travel. You're not going to Saudi Arabia. I didn't want to elaborate too much and interrupt him or anything. No one is going to beat that record. They could try. He did it so quick. Yeah. He deserves all the props in the world. No one is going to do it quicker than him. They say it timing, and everything, it, timing is everything in wrestling, and that timing was a perfectly timed in the ring, clothesline out of the ring, and then – I just thought he was he was one of my favorites. I wasn't really kissing his ass. He's not on the line anymore. You guys can see the call dropped. He was actually one of my favorite wrestlers. Mike, you've known this for a long time. I know. Your your wife told us a story of uh, how you guys, after an event, went and followed him to a bar. Uh, no, we didn't follow him to a bar, actually. So what happened that night, I, I, I didn't know if I should bring it up to him or not. He called it following them. No, no, no. No, no, that's true. Them. No, that's true. We went to TGI Fridays. Where, now, we're in Wilkes-Barre, uh, Pennsylvania. This yeah. is like 10 years ago. We were going to go to Hershey Park for a couple of days, we had planned, on a Tuesday morning. And I saw that Raw was in Wilkes-Barre on Monday night. I said, hey, that's on the way to Pennsylvania. Now, we didn't have kids. We weren't married. We had no, no responsibilities. What the hell? Let's go to the Raw in Wilkes-Barre. So we go there. Now we're in freaking Wilkes-Barre. But our hotel rooms are in Hershey, which is still like an hour and change away. So I go, all right, we'll stay in Wilkes-Barre. Let's go out and have something to eat. We're hungry. And we heard somebody saying, all the wrestlers are at TGI Fridays. Well, what the hell? Let's go to TGI Fridays then. So we go in, and every fan is outside. And we're like, we're not sitting outside with this mob. So we're like, oh, we want to eat. And TJ, oh, you want to eat? Then come in. They put us at a table across from every wrestler there. We're leaving. And this is where it gets funny. And I'm in a car, and I actually bought a Santino Morella sign, and I wore a shirt. And we pull up at a red light, and Santino pulls up next to us in the car. Okay, whatever. Um we go to another place to eat, and they're like, oh, well, whatever. We had nowhere to stay, so we go to a strip club. Now, we did not follow them to the strip club. That's where we didn't follow them. <laughs> I walk into the strip club, and an absolutely drunk as you can get, Santino, walks out. <laughs> He's walking out of the strip club. A lot of wrestlers are still in there. He's walking out, and I'm just like, oh, my God. First, I saw Crime Time there. You remember Crime Time? Oh, yeah. Money. I saw Money. them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw them in the parking lot, and, and this is like a crappy, like, Wilkes-Barre strip club. This isn't anything that, you know, we go to in Minnesota or, you know, Dallas or wherever we may have been, um, Montreal. Um, and you say hi to crime time. They say hello, shake hands. You go inside, and Santino's bumbling around, walking out. So I'm like, oh, Santino's like, yo, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> and he, I don't know if he got – I guess he got home safe that night because he's here today. But that's my Santino story. And then you, we were only inside for like 10 minutes, and we saw all the wrestlers getting their dances and all that. So I did, I, we did follow him on Fridays, but not to the strip club. Anyway, that's my Santino story. 